Hey guys, bringing you part three of learning Lec Mod. This is going to be focused on the first 15 turns. These are potentially some of the most important turns of the entire game. And I'm going to show you kind of how to navigate them properly, in my opinion, and how to consistently make it out of those first 15 turns confident and likely having made the correct decision. And in that I'm particularly referring to what our last video covered, which was policy trees. So these first 15 turns are, are going to be about discovering the land around us, how to properly scout, and which policy tree is best and the build orders for them. I'm primarily going to be covering tradition and liberty in this guide series, as we mentioned in the last video. They're the most beginner friendly of, of the four trees. So I'll be explaining my thought process in regards to that. If you want to watch an honor guide, I have an honor guide as well. That'll be linked below. If you haven't seen part one or two, definitely encourage you to watch those first, but let's just jump right in. Okay. So the first 15 turns are fairly straightforward. And in my opinion, you should always, 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 always do two scouts. I don't care what civ you are unless you're, unless you have a fundamental idea, understanding of what you're doing. You should always do two scouts. If you watch the finals of the last tournament, every single player did two scouts. I don't care who's saying I only do one scout. All of the good players, if they're trying their absolute hardest, will always do two scouts. There's a few exceptions, right? If you're Ethiopia, you go monument, right? Like, let, if you're Nubia, you don't build a second scout. I, I'm full aware, 90%, 99% of the time, you should always do two scouts, okay? Even on Liberty, even on Piety, you should always do two scouts. The amount of times people have said to me, I made the wrong decision early game because I didn't see my land well enough, it's because they didn't do two scouts. Or if they did, they scouted poorly. So. Just save yourself the trouble. Just do two scouts. It's not, your game is not going to be much worse off. In fact, it'll probably be better. You'll get more runes on average. You'll get a better sense of your land. You'll see your neighbors, which means you'll get early trades with them. You'll get easier times um, stealing from city states. This is Im so incredibly important uh, to get all of this fundamental understanding. Delaying when you build your second scout can really hurt your game. And just for consistency's sake, just do two scouts. You're going to have a much better time. Okay. Rant over. Let's go back into this. So when we're playing tradition, we're going to go two scouts. We're going to go scout, scout. Then we're going to go straight into worker. After worker, let's say we have two or three turns until we grow to our next pop. And maybe we have a lot of chops. Okay. In that case, I'm gonna go another worker, right? Two workers before settlers, super, is completely fine. It, additionally, maybe I have a num like I have seven camps in my capital. I have a furs regional, and then I have a number of other camps around my map. And I really want to get food from camps. Goddess of the hunt. Okay, I could understand the idea to go shrine here, right? In tradition, a lot of times you want to skip a shrine for tempo. But oftentimes, if there's too good of a pantheon to pass up, like you have really good stone circles, you have a really good god of the hunt, uh, maybe Wheaton Maze looks incredible, or, you know, whatever the reason is, building a shrine isn't the end of the world. I think in general, it's best to skip it for later. Uh, you can get faith from a different source. Maybe you have incense, maybe you have tobacco, maybe you have a faith wonder, maybe you build Stonehenge, right? All of these things kind of can weigh into the reality, but ultimately getting an early shrine f to guarantee a super strong pantheon is very important. If you don't have a good pantheon, do not build a shrine before your settlers. It will only hurt your game. But this is these are the this is the game where you have, you know, you have three stone in your cap and expand with two stone and another expand with two stone. Right, you got seven stone in three cities. Yeah, I'm building a shrine to try to secure stone circles as fast as possible. 
Okay. Then, as we mentioned before, you're going to be building three settlers. So what does Liberty look like? Liberty looks very similar. You know, we're going to go two, two, two scouts, but this time we're going monument, right? We need to get that culture going. We need to make sure that we're getting enough culture to push ourselves to Lib 2 to get the settler policy, right? That's when our game really picks up. That's when we can start settling a ton of cities, right, with that 50%. After Monument, we have to go Worker. You know, is it totally possible and fair that you could want to go, like, another Worker after that? Absolutely. You could do another Worker. But realistically, oftentimes you kind of want to get your settles down really fast on Liberty. You want to secure positions. You want to, you know, use Settlers as a way to clear Barb Camps. You want to... Um, get in a good position for city states deals whatever it is you want to settle on luxes you want to get all you want to start building your next set of workers in those cities right in that case oftentimes you'll find yourself going another settler or straight into settler but i'm a sucker for early workers personally oftentimes i'll go two before settler especially if it gets me to the next pop so those are the two paths I would recommend taking. We're not going to cover honor. Honor, honor. I have a whole guide dictated to what you can do here. This is very this, and and frankly, this is scratching the surface for what you can do on these trees. But again, we're we're staying high level. We're staying beginner friendly. So okay, now let's just jump into a game real quick, shall we? So I rolled this game. I literally just randomly rolled this game. What is my first impression, right? We're again we're using IGE as before. Actually, we're not using IGE. Or it doesn't matter. We're playing 15 turns. So what is my first impression? My first impression, this is probably a tradition. Um you might be saying, "Well, you're not on a river, don't you want a garden?" Fuck a garden. Gardens don't matter. The only reason gardens would matter is if you have time to build them, right? And most of the time if you're sacrificing a city for fresh water and it's making it substantially worse it's not worth it just settle off water it's totally fine right the only real thing you're missing is going to be a water mill but even then oftentimes just settle off river okay so we're gonna settle here now i should probably make a whole video on this topic but this citizen screen is so incredibly important. Every single game you load in, you're going to open the citizen screen and you're going to press production focus on every single one of your cities. Okay? Then you're going to lock a tile you want to work. In this case, I'm locking a two food, one hammer tile, and I'm going to grow in four turns. Okay? So this is very basic. The cap looks really strong. Four first ring chops is incredibly good for tradition but you know we don't know maybe this could be liberty we i i don't know so we're going to queue up two scouts and i always research mining so i can reveal where my iron is if i had moved somewhere like that could potentially have been a horse tile maybe i'd go animal husbandry first but 99 percent of the time i'm going mining first i guess if you're maria you go pottery first but okay semantics so we're just going to be scouting here. And what I'd say is there's a couple things to keep in mind. First, do you see Tundra? Tundra. Okay. I know I'm at the bottom of the map because I see Tundra to myself. Simple enough? That makes sense. Okay. What's the other thing to consider? Where's the water? Okay. Well, this is a... Um, this is... Uh, it says coast, but you can tell because it only has one food. If it was fresh water, it'd have three. So we know that this is ocean. So I know the oceans to myself, if not been told by the tundra. This could be deceiving because it's possible there's inland seas. But in general, you know, you want to assess that, okay, the coast is here. I assume that the land's to my north. What does that mean for scouting purposes? It means nothing's really to my south that I have to be worried about getting contested. I should be scouting with my warrior at least where it is flat 
where I can move and like I want to try to move a max amount of tiles per turn. And finally, where I can end on a hill or where I can see some stuff. So the other concept you want to understand is you want to circle. You want to kind of, this warrior is going to go maybe like down through here and then around and then back up and then here. So my next scout should be going, you know, up here and then down and then here, right? Because we want to contest, we want to scout the contested areas first. Right, that makes sense because we we the ruins to my immediate south down here are one hundred percent mine. I don't have to worry about, or most of the time, I don't have to worry about someone just sneaking in behind me and taking all my ruins to myself. But I do have to worry about someone sneaking in up here and taking them. So that should be the priority on where to go. Okay, so let's move into the next turn. Let's let's try to I'll try to walk through my thought process. Okay, here's the city state, nice, and then here's the ocean as we knew, right? So. Trying to identify, okay, here's a horse tile for the the um, AI. That's good to know because I know I can steal a worker from this tile here. This forest here blocks um, the hill here, so I could sit up on this hill and steal. So this, I'm going to actually make a whole video on stealing from city-states because it's such an important topic. But in general... You should be thinking about how you can steal workers more effectively. Additionally, I gained 30 gold from meeting the city state. It's turn two, so obviously I'm the first one to meet it. But in general, this is a way to figure out, okay, like, was I the first one here? Is this area explored or not? Maybe I should be going somewhere else that maybe isn't explored, etc. So you gain 30 for meeting. If you're the first to meet a certain city state, you gain 15 if you're the second person or any af any people after the first. Okay, so there's a rune over there. So here we can obviously tell I'm bottom left of the map. I don't have to worry about um, someone being to my right, which means all of this land is mine to the right, and I should be focused on finding ruins to my left. And now because I just grew into this tile, I'm going to rework a tile here and just keep growing. Okay, looks like this is some sort of lake. And I'm going to get this rune to get a pop rune. Oh, nice. That's extremely good. Okay, ending on a hill here. Another ruin. Another map. Okay. So, we've seen a good bit of land. And what is it telling us? Well... Frankly, the land to my right doesn't look particularly strong. And that's because there's not a lot of unique luxuries. There's not a lot of resources. I don't see a river system for fresh water, etc. So what does that mean? That means I'm not looking to put two cities over here, or two or three cities over here. What I'm looking to do is I'm looking to put one city to capture all of the luxes. So my regional citrus here... I'm likely going to be settling on this hill or maybe over here if there's another luxury up here, which I'm assuming there is. Additionally, the land over here doesn't look particularly strong either. You know, I have a really, really good coastal, um, right? I could settle maybe on this hill to build all the thing or up here. Uh, this gets the obsidian, but, you know, and a third rings the olives, but nothing, nothing crazy, right? Like, so this is definitely tradition land because the power of this start is in the capital. The capital is very, very, very good. Really good river system. Lots of chops early game, which is going to drastically speed up our, our game. And I'm going to buy this iron tile so when I grow, I can grow into the iron. So let's tech to pottery for calendar and keep going. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring this scout up this warrior is going to scout this land up here to see, you know, what what's over there. This, because I got a map rune, it's pretty fortunate. I can come and get this rune down here, and I can start working my way back over to Tallinn. Oops, that was a mistake. I can start working my way back over to Tallinn to get um, a worker steal. And worker steals are some of the most important resources in the entire game. Um, 
ruins. Masonry ruin, archer ruin, 75 gold. Okay, so as we mentioned, there's a Lux over here. You know, because I'm thinking tradition, I'm able to settle third ring. I think right here to pick up the coconut dyes and citrus looks incredibly good. Also, three first ring chops is incredibly strong. So definitely putting one there. Additionally, I could do maybe a min distance here to pick up citrus coconut and then one down here to pick up the olives and whatever. So that's just three cities. Um, they look, you know, very, very good. It looks very fast, which I like. So yeah, not, this looks like a very standard start. Um, you don't need a lot of space to make it work. A lot of people, when they're new, Oh, look, look, Vic. Okay, that's really good. So that definitely changes how we settle. A lot of people, when they're new, will settle extremely far away. Because I have so many chops, actually going to go another worker, right? I don't have to worry about someone coming in and stealing this Lake Vic spot because it's so secluded from city states you'd literally have to settle past the city states to to settle it so i can afford to do this i'm gonna chop out this deer tile so i can give myself a hill for when i'm working uh settlers because you can't um okay maybe actually no so this is a definitely a contested spot uh because the worker's almost done and I have so many chops. Okay, look, that actually <laughs> works out. Guess get a pop rune. Um, usually it's not that easy, but uh, works out that I was gonna get this chop anyway. But yeah. So here, importantly, we can see this is on a hill and this is flatland. What's important about that is I want to be able to get my settler out a turn sooner. Right, if, if normally I'd, I'd cross on this, I'd stop moving on the forest and move one up here and then move another, right? Instead, if I chop this citrus tile, I can move directly onto here and directly onto here. That saves an entire turn and a half just to get to this spot, right? Because we're going to settle Lake Vic now. Like, like I said, Lake Vic completely changes how we're going to settle this. We're going to settle first ring Lake Vic, get... You know, it's a triple Lux city. Then I can settle one down here to pick up the other three Luxes and then one over here. Right? This is just incredibly, incredibly good. Um, so let's look for worker steals. And then remember, as I said before, when you're settling cities, you actually can't starve. So normally, you know, if I'm unworking every single one of my tiles, my foods at three, but I'm not starving. I'm stagnating. It's because when you're making sellers, you can't starve. So I'm going to work all hill tiles here um, because I'm able to um, with when I'm building sellers. So we're going to chop this as well. Chop this as well. Okay, Tallinn's building a bunch of work boats. Could steal from Havana. I'd prefer Tallinn most definitely but you know this city this barb camp over here is likely to cause some issues but yeah so this was the first 15 turns so how does the game look the game looks incredibly good we have two workers out i got very fortunate with pop runes that's for sure but we have two workers out we're about to send our first settler and turn 17 is going to finish so we're going to have this settled by so 16 17 18 19 20 so by turn 21 we settle lake vic and then we'll be able to settle the next one very soon as well we'll have all of our luxuries improved right because they can start building plantations immediately um so incredibly fast game incredibly good start we if we didn't go to scouts you know i could totally see someone picking liberty here and is liberty wrong uh no i i wouldn't say it's wrong right you could you could make liberty work for sure right you could go one here one on incense one for this olives it looks like there's a city state up here so maybe 
not there and then all these are kind of duplicate luxes so you'd, you'd be on a kind of a tight schedule and honestly you'd probably have to end up killing moors but you could make it work definitely but i'd say because we had two scouts and we had enough time to come and see everything and where the land was we got enough ruins you know our decision making was much easier so hopefully this makes sense um this game is primed to be extremely strong and yeah like and i just wanted to stress like you know you don't have to go straight into sellers as soon as possible to have a fast game you just you the real thing that is a, is a catalyst for a fast game is workers and how many workers you can get early and, and whatnot. And honestly, I'd be most tempted to steal from Maceru this game of anyone because with this Lake Vic City, there's so many chops. I'd want to get the the workers over here as soon as possible. Also, this looks like it's a horse tile, which is really good for stealing. But sorry, I was this was not supposed to be a 20 minute long video on the first 15 turns, but there's genuinely a lot to talk about um, when you're considering what to do and how to settle this. So you could honestly go five city tradition here. You could go four. Um, so you could go Liberty. You could do anything. It's, it's all up to preference, but in this start with this fast of a start with this good of a capital, um, all this fresh water Hills, I would definitely lean tradition here. Especially on Sun God. I love Sun God starts uh, for tradition. So, yeah, this looks like a really strong game. So, hopefully, this was helpful. Um, and, yeah, stay tuned for part four.